Hi, this is Charlie Montatuella again from BlueBearFlutes.com. Uh, back here today to finish up our special little flute build we were making. As you've noticed, I've kind of changed clothes. I've gone from shorts and t-shirt to uh, a sweatshirt and sweatpants, mostly because uh, the weather here in Alabama, like it does in most of the southeast, can change on a dime. And it seems these days in the whole world that the weather's gotten where it changes quite rapidly. So uh, 70, 80 degree weather a couple of days ago, and it's down in the 30s and 40s right now. And uh, probably going to get cold for a little while again. Anyway, this is our Christmas uh, tree flute that was made. If you just checking in with us for the first time on this particular flute build, this was made out of a Christmas tree uh, that we had. And it was actually still green and have the fronds and everything on a very beautiful Christmas tree. And uh, this guy here is the heart out of that Christmas tree and it's turned into a flute. It hasn't been cured out very well until actually the last day or so that I've let it dry out while it's been glued together. I glued it, you watched it's glued together. While I uh, glued it, it was still a little bit on the damp side even though I had burned it some to, uh, to dry it up. But right now what I'm going to do is round the edges of it off on my router table and then I'm going to go and hand sand this one. Normally I would want to put it on a lathe or something to sand it. We don't use a lathe like most people do with uh, tools and um, uh, knives to cut and shape things. We only use a lathe to sand with. Um, it's a lot better than using my wrists and my hands like I have in the old days. But today that's the way I'm going to have to do this one because he's a little on the thin side as we discussed in the previous video. If you haven't seen the previous video yet, I would definitely recommend pausing this one, stopping or whatever, and go back and watch it first so this all makes sense. Anyway, so this is the flute. This is the piece that I saved um, of the same tree. If you noticed from the first video, I had cut up uh, two different trees. One that was cured out and that was really soaking wet, and one that was fresh and green but was kind of dry. And uh, this is a piece of the tree that this guy came from. And the special totem that I mentioned before that I'm going to make for it is actually going to be this is just some silhouettes that I created using some stock imagery. Had a little stock Christmas tree, a little stock Santa Claus and I kind of put them together. This uh, design here is going to be our flute totem. And uh, after we're done with it, I hope you guys are ready for a nice little treat, learning a very special, well, let's just leave that as a special treat. <laughs> anyway, so we've got enough wood here to cut out our Santa and our tree, and I'm gonna cut them out independently, although I have them together there. That's the way I intended to be finished on uh, the flute block when it's complete, but you'll all see how that works in just a moment. For the meantime though, you want to put on your earmuffs. I'm going to wear mine so that I can uh, use this loud tool. I'm just kidding, you don't have to put your earmuffs on. You'd probably be listening to sugar plum fairies and things dancing in your mind. But uh, let's go ahead and do that. So that was pretty quick and easy. All we did was take the corners off of the square piece of wood and you can see that there is some uh, white showing up amongst this uh, burned black color that I have. I'm going to take it over to my belt sander and just kind of sand it down really quick and then probably do a little hand sanding on it and I think we'll just about have a flute.
So the flute turned out really great, I think. The only thing is because I cut that uh, the blanks a little too wide in the beginning of uh, the video we made earlier, um, as I had mentioned, it, it caused the inside of the flute to be a little bit too large because of my settings on my router table, <clears throat> and making it a little bit too large also made the tone just a half step lower, so it's actually a fantastic F-sharp and uh, I could make it a G like I originally intended but sometimes when a flute doesn't have to be it's not required to be tuned to a certain key and and it sounds really good you hate to mess it up <laughs> It's got a nice tone to it, a very unique tone, and I know that once we lacquer it, that's going to change the tone just a little bit, make it a little more crisp, and make a few things a little more smooth and fluid. So I'm going to take my little temporary clamp off of this guy so I can show you what I did with the block. This flute block here is just a simple little block, and it's actually going to be the base of my Santa and Christmas tree. I had to cut into the bottom of it, so that it fit over the the flute uh, edge here. There's some other things I could have done instead, but I did it this way so that I can put my Santa here and my tree there, and you're going to see what that looks like. I'm about to start carving on the flute block, uh, the totem, and uh, in the meantime, I think we're going to go ahead and lacquer this guy and uh, let him let him kind of dry and cure a little bit with the lacquer on him so that he's nice and shiny and finished up really pretty. Um, one thing I want to mention too, as you were watching me do the sanding for a moment or two, um, a lot of times in here we wear, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, aspirator masks. We have a few dust masks that we get are just simple, you know, like household cleaning masks. I know I've got several of them laying around. Oh yeah, there's some probably see back in the back of the shop here. We've got my real respirator deal here whenever it gets really bad, you know. Um, in the meantime, we also have... Uh, dust collection systems and some ventilation uh, work that helps out a lot. While I was sanding on it, you may have seen some of the dust particles floating around. In my lifetime, um, I've used and carved red cedar, eastern red aromatic cedar, since I was maybe five years old. And it's part of the reason, as I mentioned before, that I have a difficult time smelling cedar but the sawdust of cedar never really seemed to have bothered me as a lot of other sawdust does. Pine doesn't seem to bother me either, but western cedar sawdust, the fine little dust we get only when we're in the shop in here, not while you're playing and that's not going to happen, but um, while we're in the shop sanding on it, preparing and finishing it, uh, the dust on that bothers me just a little bit, so we started you know, with all the great ventilation system and sometimes we wear the masks but this stuff, spruce, oh my gosh, <laughs> this particular tree, when I was sanding on it, the fine particles coming off of it were, were ghastly, and uh, that can become very dangerous. When you're sanding on anything, or when you're creating these fine particles, you have to be aware of what you're doing, and you have to, to keep that in mind so that you don't endanger yourself. And if you have doubts or questions, you can always ask people. I mean, some people in lumber yards may know. Um, you know, if it's dangerous to, uh, to work on certain types of woods. I know from my experience of working on sycamore trees, the tree itself actually uh, puts off of a smell that really bothers me in a big way. Um, but anyway, something to consider. Definitely whatever you do, if you're making anything, flutes, just uh, carving or what have you, be safe, be careful. You know, use whatever proper equipment that you deem necessary, and if you don't know what it is, make sure you check. Um, there's a way to learn all this stuff. So, uh, the next thing we're going to do, like I said, going to go ahead and lacquer this guy, and I'm going to show you over at the saw how we're going to make this uh, beautiful Santa and Christmas tree totem, which is kind of an unusual one. I have made some weird ones before, Bigfoot and Dotsons and uh, 
some of everything. Um, but uh, but anyway, so we'll we'll do that while this guy here is drying, and then you'll get to see a picture of the finished flute after we're done with all this, and because um, it'll have to be cured over a day. It's kind of chilly today, so the lacquer we use needs to cure for a little bit longer. You'll get to see a beautiful picture of it when it's finished and dry tomorrow, and then we'll have that special surprise I mentioned to you. Okay, so many of you know my technique of making flute totems. If you don't, please go back and check out some of our flute totem videos. I mean, once you've learned one or two, you can pretty much make whatever you like um, with the same technique. However, we will be having more uh, videos in the very near future on making different types of totems. So the first thing we do is cut out this Christmas tree here using some carbon paper. I lay it down on top of my piece of wood. Then I lay the tree where it needs to be. Sorry about the shadows there. I'm going to trace it out. I'm going to trace it out a little differently, I think, than what it is that the picture is. It's just a guide. It's one thing about flute making, or really anything in life, I guess. Don't always expect it to be exactly the same. So this guy here is looking pretty cool, I think. Okay, let's see. Yeah, not too shabby. It looks like I got a little bit I can pencil in there to try to help out. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a tree trunk so I have something to put it down into the flute block bottom the base piece with. There we go. And then the next one I'm going to move down just a little bit and kind of keeping in mind where the tree is in relationship to the end of the wood there. And I'm going to whittle out a Santa Claus here. He's got kind of a coat we've got to remember. Little hand that pokes up like this. And then there's a little rough around his coat. It's a piece of his mustache there, but I don't know if we're going to be able to make that part happen. And I'm not really happy with the shape of his hat. So we may have to wind up doing that a little differently. I do like having that his rucksack that he has, his little backpack full of toys. And then, let's see, we can probably do something similar with his foot and make a piece that can go down into the flute block. There's another pant leg or boot leg piece of his coat and go up like that. So let's see, yeah, that one turned out pretty good. So there's a picture for comparison right there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and trim those out really quick like and see what we can do to carve them up and make them look like a Santa and a Christmas tree and put them on our totem, on our uh, flute block here as the totem. And then uh, after we put those guys together and the flute is dry, then I think you guys may be impressed with something. Anyway, I hope so. Uh, so I'll be back to finish this up here really soon with the flute and we'll talk about it for a moment and then we'll uh, talk about maybe that little extra treat I had mentioned.
So what I've done, if you've noticed, was I cut out this little guy here, and I know a lot of you are thinking, at least the Americans <laughs> that watch our programs, um, are probably thinking, you know, I could probably buy a little Santa figurine and a little Christmas tree figurine and a novelty or hobby shop and save a lot of time, which you probably could. And a few other countries in Europe and a um, few other places all, all around the world, you may be able to do the same thing. But this is an old technique uh, that is world-renowned, you know, carving out your own little figurine. It's, it's part of the whole fun of the deal. So don't forget that when you think about the easy way to do things. And, of course, we're using saws and what have you instead of a pocket knife or a, a whittling knife. Um, but, uh, but anyway, and, of course, I'm going to use my trusty rotary tool. Uh, but uh, let's see what it takes to get this guy up to, to par. I'm going to wear my goggles, as most of you are wondering. What's he got those on his head for? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and trim this guy up. So this is a good start on the tree. I don't know if any of you noticed my little rotary tools power light was blinking, so I need to charge it for a second. But uh, I'm going to be hand sanding this guy in the meantime. And uh, this is going to be our Christmas tree. I know a lot of the old time carvers are thinking, you're using a power rotary power tool. And of course, a lot of the other people I mentioned are thinking, I could have bought one of those. <laughs> Just sitting here somewhere in between all of that. A little bit of hand sanding though, and I think this guy here is going to be really way cool. Like anything, I, I think a lot of people are just really interested in seeing the end product. But uh, I do like you to know that I am, yes, making this myself. <laughs> a lot of people claim that they do things themselves, and you find out later that they're only doing part of the thing or really nothing at all. It can be frustrating. Now, this stuff here is handmade. Okay, a little bit more sanding, and I think we've got ourselves a right nice Christmas tree. Tannenbaum. And Tannenbaum, oh Tannenbaum, wie glücklich sind sein. Branches. I forget how that song goes. It's like second year German class. What's really bad is when I'm speaking German to some of my friends and I start speaking Spanish. I don't know why it's like that. <laughs> it all starts to blend together after a while, I guess. Okay, Mr. Christmas Tree, I think, is pretty unique and cool looking. A few scratches there, not really a big deal. If I was very concerned with it, I would go back and buff it with some finer paper. This is only 120 grit. Um, but the next thing I'm going to do is dremel Mr. Santa Claus down, and then we'll mount both of these guys. Oh, that's going to look way cool. And then uh, after we mount it, I'm going to do a little bit of light painting, and uh, hopefully everybody will be as impressed as I am. <laughs> but anyway, let's get started on this guy here. Maybe my dremel will hold out for a moment before I have to charge it.
ahead and drilled um, some holes into the base of the flute block so I can mount these little guys. And I know you want to really look at it right now, but it's, it's going to be better once it's painted. When it comes to carving, sometimes you're better off using a uh, very basic, basic approach. Especially if you're going to go back and paint on top of it, which normally I don't do. One part of the process. These guys over here to the side, and let's see what color Santa needs to be. I guess we can all imagine him wearing red and black. Kind of a festive little fellow. With flutes, the thing that makes a flute look really nice is contrast, whether it be the grain of the wood or the type of wood it is or having a flute totem on it or even having no flute totem on it. The one thing that really helps is contrast. So I made his hat a little bit different color with a little really white oh, puffball on the end of it. Okay. And I'm starting to feel like I'm getting close here on Santa. Most of this just needs to be dried and mounted. I think that's got our little little Santa Claus here. I didn't give him any face. It's something else a lot of Indian tribes, some of them believe in carving faces on human looking figures and some of them don't believe in carving faces. I usually don't put faces on things. I've just never come up with one that I enjoy the most. Um, sometimes I put faces on eagles and snakes and uh, maybe once in a while a bear or uh, another type of mammal. But is very rare. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and mount these guys so that we can put them on our flute and see what all this looks like together. And then uh, that'll be it. Okay, so we finished our little flute, towed them up, and I think it turned out pretty good. I don't know if you want to zoom in on that. Of course, we'll have a picture posted of him at the end of the video. And any of you that follow us on Facebook on Blue Bear Flutes or Blue Bear Arts on Facebook, you'll be able to see some pictures of it, maybe a little bit better up close and personal there. Of course, uh, it looks pretty cool from both sides. 
probably should give him a left arm, but I haven't decided on that yet. I think the little Christmas tree turned out pretty good, although whoever decorated it really doesn't have good taste in lighting. But anyway, I think it turned out pretty good. So, um, and like I said, we'll have another video or two on playing uh, some different types of songs here pretty soon, and uh, I know you guys will really enjoy it. And I hope you've enjoyed this flute build video. It's just to give you an idea of some of the things that you can do um, with some of the uh, items that you may have laying around the house. <laughs> Christmas tree, an example. Uh, something that's uh, really kind of a, a unique little uh, gift type idea that we've made. Something that's kind of recycling something and giving it another purpose. As well as, uh, you know, making it some kind of uh, significant special uh, maybe gift or what have you to commemorate something or uh, anything of that nature. Like I say, just to give you some more inspiration for flute making. But uh, this entire flute, except for the leather, and as my little boy pointed out, the paint <laughs> is made out of the Christmas tree itself. Uh, the flute totem, the little people, the uh, tree, the block, everything else, the flute itself is made out of our expired Christmas tree from this year. So uh, once again, this is Charlie Montatuyella signing off for BlueBearFlutes.com. Come by and visit us if you get a chance on our website. have a lot of neat new uh, items coming out there very soon, some of them today and tomorrow. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we also have uh, all of these videos here on YouTube as well as contact and find some of the places we've gone to and some of the things we've done on YouTube as well as our Facebook account. Um, so you can check us out on Facebook. Once again, that's Blue Bear Flutes or Blue Bear Arts on Facebook. I think we've got probably four different Facebook accounts, but uh, they're all kind of tied in together. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Like I say, take care. Happy holidays if it's that time of the year when you're watching. If it's not, we'll see you on the holidays again here really soon. Y'all take care, and thanks again.